I think Thai women, for me, they mostly don't cheat when they're in a relationship with someone that they like being serious with. But they like to lie when they are single to be like, oh, I did with no, I don't did with this guy, you know, just because we want to, we don't want to stuck or stick with anybody. Guys don't even know. They're just like, oh, beautiful, and that's it. So maybe you need to have a look a lot. What is up, guys? And welcome back to the One Night in Bangkok podcast. If you guys are new here, my name is Eric. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way over in the USA, but I've been here in Thailand for five years already. On this podcast, I'm bringing you some of the most interesting people and places and stories from here in Bangkok. If you want to see more about living in Bangkok or if you're traveling here, hit the subscribe button. Also, we have a new clips channel, so if you don't have time for the full one-hour-long episodes and you just want to watch some fun five-minute clips throughout the week, subscribe to the clips channel. I will put a link to that down below. We are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, so if you are in the car or you're working and you just want the audio version, I've linked down to that below as well. And lastly, if you enjoy the channel, if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy Earn being here and answering all of your fun questions, buy us a drink. It helps support the channel and it makes everyone have a better time. Tonight we have a special Q and A episode. We've got a lot of questions from you guys on Instagram and on Facebook and in YouTube comments. So I have pulled together a bunch of all the things that you guys have been asking. And we're just gonna go down this list and try to get all your questions answered. If you guys don't know Ern, she's been on a bunch of episodes now. Yes. Ern, where are you from in Thailand, and how long have you been in Bangkok? Um, I'm from Ubon Ratchathani, which is Isan of Thailand or not Eastern of Thailand, and I've been living in Bangkok for almost five years now. Okay. And where are you working currently? Um, where or well, what kind of place? Uh, I work in the restaurant. Okay, cool. So right. I always have to clarify where she works because if not, if some some idiot's gonna say she works at Nana Plaza or something like that, I can so. work anywhere. <laughs> um, okay, let's get started. So a bunch of questions. Mike says, "What about digital nomad visas? Any proof needed to be able to work remotely in Bangkok?" Well, this is a very complicated question, actually, that I think needs its own video. But basically. In order to work in Thailand, you need an actual work permit. A work permit is not the same thing as a visa. So no matter what they call these new visas they're putting out, technically, according to the way the law is written, you're not allowed to work, even if it's online or fully remote. It's kind of a weird thing, but that's just how it is here. That being said, if you do work online or you work remotely for some company in your home country. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I've never really seen an issue with that. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that they don't really enforce. But just so you know, even if you're working remotely, you're supposed to have a work permit. I think they are putting out these new visas very soon. I think they're hoping to start it in September, somewhere around there. That's going to give you like 180 days, and then you can extend it another 180 days. And they seem to be encouraging people to get this visa and then work remotely from Thailand. So it's kind of a weird thing. Um, Again, you can't legally work in Thailand without a work permit, but it's if you're working remotely, I don't think anybody cares. Slightly related to that, this guy asks, what are some remote jobs that foreigners can do to live and work in Thailand? So I would say when it comes to living here and working, almost everybody I personally know has some sort of business, whether it's online. In like, the country. Yeah, like in their home country. Maybe it's like online marketing or they own real estate in their home country or they're some kind of like content creator some sort of online business almost no one i know or i don't know maybe i know one person that has an actual job in thailand here and i think because you know even if you can get a job as a foreigner here the salary probably isn't going to be that good yeah, right not that high probably yeah. could be Start from 40 or 50K per month. Yeah. Or maximum could be 100K. Yeah. If like work in a hospitality, stuff like that. 
I know a lot of people have this idea of coming here and teaching English, but to、oh, be、yeah. honest, I don't think it's a great idea because it's just so little money those jobs pay. Like I, some of those jobs pay like twenty thousand baht per month. Yeah, and I just think it's hard to live anywhere near Bangkok for that amount of money. If you're living out in the middle of nowhere, Thailand, and you can get a reasonable salary, I think it's a lot more doable. But I still don't think it's the best option. Probably the best option is to have some sort of online business for yourself that you can do in your home country or like internationally. But then you stay here. Right.、Um, this one, Earn. This person is asking, what are some of the best restaurants in Bangkok? What kind of restaurant? I don't know. He didn't say. Um, for me, if you wanna. You know, explore some Thai food, some kind of Thai food. You can explore like any street food here. Or I would suggest you to go to like、um, a night market, jot fair, some stuff like that. But if you prefer more like European Mediterranean things, I think、um, I can see Aesops, Aesops like Greek and. Yeah. Aesops. Yeah. Aesop. Aesop. Yeah. This is a Greek place near Greek place. Asok. Yeah. And it is on a rooftop. It's half inside, half outside. Yeah. And they have some activity like to throw the plates. Yeah. Some、stuff. of these restaurants, like、uh, it's not just you sit down and eat. Like they kind of have more of an atmosphere,、Activities. more entertainment. Yeah. yeah. So, Aesops in Asok. Yeah. And also one place I've never been, but my friends really like it, and they like to. You know, for for dating, it's perfect one.、Uh, Vaso, Spanish tapas bar, that one. Oh, I've been there a while ago. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's crazy, and you have to book like、uh, at at least one day or two days in advance. Yeah, I've said it on about a hundred episodes now. I'm gonna say it again. I like pastel. I、yes. like pastel because it's a cool atmosphere, rooftop. A lot of nights they have different kinds of entertainment, like live. Drummers, or I was there. They had a saxophone player, or girls with snakes, all kinds of different things. So check that out. That's a cool dining、yeah. experience. I brought my parents there. They really、yeah. like. If、it. you have like specific, specific like any kind of food that you really want to explore, just comment down below, and we can recommend some more,、mm. more details. This person asked, "Are there any bad neighborhoods in Bangkok that people should avoid, like any dangerous neighborhoods?"、Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. Like for for me, I didn't. For me, it's not like da- danger. For me, it's like any area. But how about you? Do you, what do you think? I really don't feel like da- Bangkok is very dangerous at all. Yeah. Like I would be more afraid in my home city of Boston in many places than here.、Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it, for a girl if it's different, but I've never really felt. I don't. I don't think but, like we need to avoid or. Like or even some some say like some tourist spot like for example soy cowboy like oh you need to stay away from like working girls but there is some some part of them that like okay it's more just fun hang out and that's it so yeah I think this person is more worried about getting robbed or something like that robbed、so、I think I th- it's every I think more mainly the tourist spot like Kusan Road can be. Yeah, but even yeah. when he, when I say dangerous, sorry, I don't mean like pickpocket. Like、mm-hmm. they take your money out of your pocket,、oh, yeah. like they beat you to death and then steal from you. It's just not that common here. Which I I think Ern is having a hard time thinking about this、yeah. because she doesn't even know what we deal with in some other parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, violent crime isn't so much of a thing here. Of course, it exists, but not on the same scale. I think as. Like some places in the U.S., for example. For here, I think it's very less. Like, yeah, I don't, I barely see that kind of thing. This person says, "How does a foreigner open a bank account in Thailand?" So、mm. more and more people are moving here, and they want to get a bank account because a bank account makes your life so much easier. You can transfer money easier. You're not getting、um, the ATM fees. Yeah. Because you know, for a foreigner, it's two hundred and twenty baht. Every time you take money out from the ATM,、Aww. plus your home country's bank charges you a fee, plus the exchange rate is very bad.、Oh, yeah. So you spend a lot of money on just taking yeah, money. Yeah, and also 
in Thailand, in Bangkok now, they like to scan QR code. Yeah, in so many everywhere. places here. When I first came here, I was surprised. Not many people use like a debit card or a credit card. Yeah, like I never see people use this. But what they do is they have each bank here has their own app for the phone. Yes, and you scan a QR code yeah. to pay for things. It's called Prom Pay. Yeah, it's like very common, pay. and that is the biggest benefit I think of having mm. a Thai bank account. Yeah. So, how do you open a Thai bank account? Well, unfortunately, it's been getting harder and harder. So, is it possible to do it on a tourist visa? Because a lot of people ask that. I think it's possible, but you may have to go to like ten or fifteen or twenty different banks before you get someone to do it. I don't think it's illegal. It's just that a lot of banks, I think, don't want to do this. Mm. Uh, because maybe there's some reporting requirements, yeah. or it's extra or work for them. Or maybe you stay just like very yeah. short time. Yeah. So maybe they don't want to open for you. But I, some. I, I have a Thai bank account, but I got it when I was on an education visa, and even then, there were two banks that said no, and then a third one said okay. And it and when the third one, when I walked in, I had a big stack of cash. And I put it on the counter, and I said, "I want to open an account." So if you walk in with like a thousand baht, it might be a little harder. But if you walk in with a lot of money and you look like you know presentable, then yeah. I think that's going to help. We'll be fine. Also, a lot of a lot of times there are agents that say they'll open an account for you, and they might charge you like four or five thousand baht to do it. And yeah, I get it. You shouldn't have to pay someone to open an account yeah. for you. But it, it's so difficult now. It might just be worth it just to mm -hmm. get it done. Um, also, some banks they won't open an account for a foreigner unless you also buy some insurance or something. All like right. they want to get some insurance sale or some commission on it. So I don't know. It's possible you might have to deal with one of these things. Yeah. But honestly, whenever you have a chance to open an account, I would just do it because it's not getting any easier. It's only getting harder. Senpai says. As a single guy, what is the best city to party during New Year's Eve, and why? During what? New New Year's. During New Year. I think you call it countdown. Ah, countdown. I would say Pattaya. Really? Yeah, they have like a firework festival, like you know, a very very beautiful and like I think last year also like have this festival and people loved it. People like. Goes to mm. Pattaya for to see the firework. I've been in Bangkok only two times yeah. during New Year's. Um, the first time I was sick, and oh, I was yeah. at home. The second time uh, I went to Khao San Road because the person I was with wanted to go there, and it was just really crazy with like a lot. I didn't like it. It was too many people. I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I think Bangkok is a, obviously a great place for New Year's. There's yeah. so many things, especially near Icon Siam. Yeah, on the I river. mean, I mean, in Bangkok, uh, uh, you say Icon Siam, they also have like the shows, fireworks show as well. Yeah. So in Bangkok, it would be easier to see like the countdown, like in many mall, in shopping mall, they all celebrate this New Year together. But I think Pattaya would be interesting because. Yeah. They have the whole beach, and they they do the fireworks yes, over the water. Yeah, you lay on the beach, and yeah. you wait to see Actually, that firework you, thing. Now that you said that, I think next year that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. All right. Next. So Umesh says America is supposed to be the land of dreams. So why are young people coming to stay in Thailand? Do you wonder about this too? You'd like people from Europe or America come to Thailand, and you think why are they coming here? Yeah, I mean, maybe they come because because they love the culture, the food, the people here, and also like as you said, they maybe okay work remotely and then like they can spend like less money but more fun, yeah. like more activities here. Yeah, so that's I mean, the reason I guess I am, if you haven't noticed, an American, so I I can answer this a little bit. I mean, it's a combination of things, kind of like Ern said. It's not just one thing, but it's a combination of the culture. The weather for me was big because mm. I'm from a pretty cold oh, yeah. city. I don't like the cold. Yeah. Every year, I was very miserable during the cold season. Mm -hmm. So I that's why I came here the first time. Um, but the value you get here for money is amazing. Bangkok is not the cheapest place in the world for sure. There's a lot of other cheaper places. But as far as what you get for what you spend, I think it is very, very good. So I think those are the main reasons a lot of people come here. I mean, seriously, to live here. Obviously, there's a lot of tourists that come here for other reasons, whether it's like 
temples or uh, yeah, Nana yeah, yeah. Plaza or whatever, you know. But um, I think as most of the people that I meet that come to live and work here, it's mm -hmm. more about like the culture, the weather, the food, yeah. the value for money, that yeah. kind of thing. Have you tried training in any Brazilian jiu-jitsu Brazilian jiu gyms in Bangkok? Never. Do you know what that is or no? Jiu-jitsu, I have no idea. I just do the Muay Thai, Thai boxing because my dad, he is a Thai boxing coach before. Yeah, so there are some BJJ gyms ah, I think in I know. I've Bangkok. Seen. And actually, when I was younger, I used to train this. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but since I came to Thailand, I mostly do the Thai boxing just because, I don't know, that's what people do here. Everybody does it. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind trying out a BJJ gym. So if anybody has yeah. any Should try recommendations, to. drop them in the comments below. Is it, Adam says, is it easy to make genuine friends in Bangkok, either Western or Thai? I think it's easy. But well, it's, it depends, like, uh, I think maybe the work and your lifestyle yeah, That's so cool. I would say it depends who you hang out and also what mm. your interests are, who, who you hang out with, where you go and what your interests are. So if you are someone that's like a digital nomad or an entrepreneur, there's a lot of different events in the city, a lot of places you can go, even in Starbucks. Like many people have just come up to me at Starbucks and just started talking to me and asking me like what I'm working on, what I'm doing, the whole thing. I actually think it's a great way to meet people because you're hanging out in a cafe on working on your computer on like a Tuesday afternoon, you can see who's there doing like serious work and and, and like who's there just for traveling or, mm -hmm. you know, because the people that are here to see temples and go to bars, they're not at the cafe at, you know, 10 yeah. in the morning doing work. So um, is it hard to make genuine friends? I mean, it, it can be, especially because a lot of people come here for a short amount of time, like Westerners, and then they leave or they go to another location. Um, I find it actually it's it's kind of hard to make friends with Thai guys because I just mm. don't come across Thai guys as much. I, I do have Thai guys that are friends, but not as many. And it's just it's a little harder, I think, to meet up with them. For whatever reason, you come across a lot more Thai women. I think it's because they're more in the front of the hospitality industry. Like yeah. you work at a restaurant. Yeah, right? mostly so, girls right yeah so i met you because i walked into the restaurant mm. and i just saw you but you know that's that would be like an uncommon jump for a guy mm -hmm. i think so yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure and you also don't see the depending on where you go like the bars and the nightclubs a lot of nightclubs have no thai guys whatsoever it's just thai uh, yeah. women so it really depends where you and go I think also because of the language like if compare I would say Thai girls, they speak English more than Thai guys. Yeah, I agree with that. I would that. say, like, for, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a few questions on condos. This person says, is it worth buying a condo in Thailand? That is a difficult question to answer. I mean, I would say it's definitely not the same, probably, as your home country, like the U.S., not the same at all. I mean, in the U.S., buying any kind of property is a pretty safe bet. Here, it's not as safe. I'm not saying it doesn't work out well, because it does, but a lot of things can happen here, Like especially because they're building so much. If you yeah. buy a condo, they'll build a condo right next door, and now your yours actually goes down in value, which is unheard of in most of the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is just with the way some of the laws and regulations are here, some unexpected things can happen. Like there was that story about Ashton Asok oh, yeah. where they built the condo, but they, they weren't really supposed to build the driveway on a piece of land because the land belonged to the MRT. Mm -hmm. and they got in trouble, but now the building is already built. Mm -hmm. So now what are they going to do? Yeah. So are they going to knock the building down? Or are they going to build a new driveway? They, it's, it's a whole like situation mm -hmm. now. So yeah, I think so many people try to build like new condos like so fast and then they kind of didn't make sure like okay it's gonna have some problem after that or not and also yeah in Bangkok everything new is always coming up so maybe you might be like stay for six months and then you feel bored I think it's better not yeah. to buy it and then you can change the vibe the environment and then meet new people in new area I think it's better 
Yeah, or even if you want to buy it to do some business, I still can feel that it's better to rent for a year, like just a contract one year and do some business. For example, like Airbnb is for me is better than. Yeah, if you are a single person, especially, I mean, if you compared the rate of the that most Thai condos appreciate in a given area mm. to the rate of appreciation of like different investment accounts, like even in the U.S., the S and P five hundred. Like it's not, you'd probably would make more from just investing in a very basic kind of investment than buying property here. And then you can just take that money and rent whatever condo you want. So um, the only exception I would say is like, if you had a family, let's say you were married, especially to a Thai person mm -hmm. and you had a family and you know, you're going to be here for a very long time, then I think it makes more sense to, to actually buy property here or buy a condo. Yeah. Because if you don't know, foreigners cannot buy land. They can only buy a condo, and even with that, any condo building it has to be a maximum, I think, of forty nine percent foreigner ownership and fifty one percent Thai ownership. So, yeah, not sure about that. <laughs> no, no, that that is for sure. I'm I'm just not sure if it's like fifty percent, fifty percent, or forty nine, fifty one. But it's it's something 49. like that. The building can't be more than fifty percent foreigners mm. for sure. Um, and actually what I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, I've heard that many times they give the Thai people a discount because they really want to sell the condo to foreigners, but yeah. they can't unless they sell the Thai unit. So they may sell Thai to Thai people at a little discount. Yeah. And then they sell to foreigners at a higher price. Does it think have money? Carmen asked, best place in Thailand to live as a foreigner besides Bangkok? Besides Bangkok. I think people will like to live in Chiang Mai, more like nature and like to meet local people. But when I went there last time, I kind of feel like, oh, now it's start to feel like foreigners more than Thai people. Really? Yeah, yeah. When I went to Chiang Mai, like the mall everywhere is like, oh, farang, farang, farang. Really? So I've been yeah. to Chiang Mai a few times, but I haven't spent that much time there. Mm. I do know a lot of Americans go there and a lot of digital nomads. Like even from years ago, I think Chiang Mai was a big hub mm. for digital nomads. But um, okay, that's interesting. I think honestly, depending on what kinds of experiences you want. Or, or lifestyle that you yeah, want. Like, you want like very peaceful, quiet like you can pick somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Isan. Yeah, like you can, Isan. You can stay in Ubon Rashadani. But I would say it's very like, um, not like city life like this. Maybe you have a big mall, just like two, three malls. And mostly the places that you can hang out could be ca cafe. But you will explore more about like the nature, like the river, Mekong River. And also you can go across to Laos, you know, to hang out with the Isan people or like Laos people. Mm. I know a lot of foreigners live in Phuket. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. It just feels like a holiday destination for me. Yeah. Uh, I know it depends where you live in Phuket. Like you don't have to live in Patong. Yeah. You can live in many places in Rabai. Phuket. Rabai, I think it's good. Yeah, but I don't really have experience with that. One place I definitely would not live is Pattaya <laughs> because it just seems like a big party town mm. all the time. The whole city, at least the main part of Pattaya, like our, where the yeah, beach is, yeah. is like most things are there are set up for the party and for the party tourists. Party and work. And I and... think that kind of lifestyle grinds on you. So mm. I wouldn't mind going there for like a weekend trip, but I don't think I could live there. Okay, nightclubs. We have a lot of questions on nightclubs. Which nightclub is most famous for foreign tourists nightclub in bangkok right uh the most famous i think i mentioned many times sugar um space plus uh rule 66 what else that is popular here well, hold um, on you're saying let me, okay i'm assuming this guy by his picture he's a well, actually i can't tell i think he's a westerner i can't tell from his picture but I want to make a distinction because there are some nightclubs that are very popular with Asian foreigners, like Space Plus. Yeah. And then there are others that are more popular with Western, Western. foreigners. Western. So you said Space Plus. I think Space Plus is a great club as far as like the experience, mm. the music, the production, but it's almost entirely Chinese. 
So if you are a Western guy, you know, I'm not saying you won't have a great time, but it's not, I don't think it's the same. Maybe it's not your thing. Yeah. Like... If you go with a group of friends, I think it's okay, but you might not like it for that reason. Um, I feel like they really heavily cater to the Chinese because Space Entertainment, the company that owns them, is a Chinese company. Um, the other nightclubs in that area, around the RCA area, are are nice. Route 66, uh, Onyx. Onyx them, but also very heavily Asian crowd, not many mm. foreigners. So depending on how you feel about that, it might or may not be good for yeah. you. The really popular ones for Western foreigners, I think, are Sugar, the Hip Hop Club on Soy 11. Flamenco. See, I don't think that that's that popular for Taurus. All He's right. talking about Taurus. Mm -hmm. um, Flamenco is a Latin, La Latin. place at M Courtier yeah. Mall at Prom Punk. But I think for Taurus, Sugar Hip Hop Club, right near it is Levels, which is more EDM. Yeah. Oh, Havana Social, Havana. which is Latin. Those are all basically right next to each Latin, other on Soy 11. And maybe Sing Sing Theater on Sucumvert Road, which is, depending on the night, could be house music or hip hop. So those are probably the main ones. Sugar, Levels, Havana Social, Sing Sing, Sing, Sing. Theater for Western tourists. Tourists. Uh, this guy says, what are the most happening clubs in Thailand? Just kind of answered that. Although there are new places springing up all the time. And so if you live here or if you want to go to a more local spot, the, the clubs and bars in Ekamai or Tong Law is more of a Thai mm. audience. So if you want to try that, you can. But I think if you're new to Thailand, you might not like it. You can try it, but you might not yeah, like it. Yeah, you can maybe check out Tara Tong Law. To be honest, I don't think foreigners are going to like Tara. Yeah, too much. but it's like if Tara you're, if you're an Thai explore place. like yeah. super Thai, like because we just, just like, you know, Asian, Chinese or Western. So maybe if you want to see more Thai, okay. Terra. Right near Terra, though, is a newer place called Muin. Muin. I don't even know how you say it. Is that Muin. how you say it? Yeah, Muin. Is it supposed to be a Thai name or Chinese name or I, what? I think it's Korean or. Oh, I don't know. Because they have uh, the Korean noodle right like front okay. of the entrance. So I think maybe Korean, Chinese. I'm not sure. So this place is newer. And if you, this is definitely a happening club in Bangkok. It's definitely one of the most popular ones yeah. now. I don't think it's as popular or known by tourists but people that live here i think a lot of them are going there um this person says moneyball says which clubs to find a thai girl who is not a freelancer mm. good luck with that <laughs> i mean here's the thing there are these freelancers in every place basically yeah in some way but that doesn't mean you can't go and have a good time and, you know, have a problem with yeah. that. Also, if, if you guys don't know what a freelancer is, it's someone that is offering themselves for services. Working girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say to avoid like uh, these people maybe must be the club or bar that like a little pricey. So because like because sometimes when it's very low price for the drink or stuff, then them can get in like pretty easily and then they can like kind of work there but it just you know some higher standard so you maybe found like just like normal girls hmm. mm. so i think there would definitely definitely be less of these freelancers at a more high so bar yeah more high so bar i would say but i still think these kinds of people are a little bit everywhere you know yeah 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 so they you know, may, they might not like offer them yeah. in that way but may they maybe want like sugar daddy or some sponsor so it's everywhere yeah just how you get that girl um dc says you should do a meetup in october i'd be happy to meet you guys with my thai girlfriend <laughs> so many people have asked about us doing like a meetup event and i we will definitely do that come october november december maybe if there's enough demand we could even do one per month or one every other month or something so if you're coming to thailand in october november or december comment down below tell us when you're coming so when we we know when to yes. plan this event maybe we celebrate new year together in Pattaya. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, we had Thai talk with Patty here before, before we recorded this one. Yes. And he's very good at speaking Thai. Mm. You can check out that episode. But one of the things that came up was how to say the name of this island. Gol Penan. Wrong. <laughs> Gol Penan. So the first one, Go. Pa Ngan. Go Pangan. So Pa is not like very straight. It's like Go. Pangan, go pangan, ng, ng, not n. You say n. 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 Okay. <laughs> so okay, practice. Go pangan. Okay, she's got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you haven't been there, that island is famous for the full moon party. Full moon party. I've yeah. never been, but I, I went in 2019 out. before COVID. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely crazy, um, in good ways and in bad ways. Like I saw a woman. With a baby there, like an infant, Ooh. and I thought, like, what is like, who, what kind of crazy person brings a baby to a full moon party? Um, it's probably not my thing so much, but I just yeah. wanted to see it. And but, but this full moon party is like, if you need to see the price of the hotel, like carefully, some hostel, even hostel, if it's like almost the day for the full moon party, is goes crazy. Yeah, very expensive. Yeah, that time. expensive. David asks, why is plastic surgery so popular in Thailand? I don't know <laughs> any guys who likes lip filler or cheek implants. Mm. I personally know some beautiful women who've had surgery. And in my opinion, it's tragic that they don't feel attractive without it. Oh. So what do you think about plastic surgery here? I think it's normal. And it's like, it's, you know, it's pretty common in Thailand. We have like so many clinics for the plastic surgery. And I think it's just to make them more confident. And uh, in other way, the way that they are obsessed with that, because for the commercial, for the like being actor, actress or influencer, our beauty standard more like want some face that looks a little bit like Korean, Korean girls, you know, the, the trends, the no style. So it's kind of, okay, we got from korean series drama and then okay we want to have something like that or other side the people we said sci -fi, right last time we mentioned about yeah, what it is, what is sci -fi? sci -fi, the girls who look like could be um kim kardashian you know what i mean like tan skin lips filler yeah some some of tiger also get um the influence from from that so just we just want to look more sexy so i think it's okay i mean yeah yeah my opinion has changed on this a little bit so when i first came to thailand i was kind of very anti-plastic surgery mm -hmm. i mean in the u.s i didn't know anybody that had plastic surgery and yeah and when i came here it was so normal mm -hmm. and i'm not just talking about like boobs i'm talking about yeah. everything like especially a very common surgery is thai people get nose surgery right? nose surgery yes i also got the nose surgery yeah nose i was job. looking at you i didn't want to say anything but i was trying to figure out if you had that yeah i had it yeah i had it but uh it depends like sometimes it's about like their job to be need to be model you want to be some actor or actress you want to fix something a little what percentage of thai women do you think have some kind of plastic surgery oh i think could be 50, 60 percent. 50 or 60 percent. Yeah, but basic, most of them start from nose first and that's it. But for the person who going to be in the way of being a model, be an actress, they might do more about like under eyes filler, lips filler or chin. The chin one the I, I see. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I went out with this girl once mm. and... Oh, and boobs. Of course. Yes. <laughs> I, I went out with a girl once and then uh, my friend saw a picture of her and she's like, oh, she has all this surgery. And I said, what surgery? Because mm -hmm. I don't know what to look for some of these things, but she definitely had like nose, like her chin, like all, all of this stuff. Yeah, the, the beauty standard here is like a very, very specific look. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's interesting when you see all the advertisements, like at the BTS yeah. for any kind of, for really any product, but especially a beauty product type of person is always exactly the same it's always mm. like very white skin yeah very like similar kind of face yeah in, in thailand more most of them like 
this look to be more like Koreans or cute or white skin. Yes. So do I think it's bad? I mean, I don't necessarily think it's bad if it's done in moderation and in a way that's tasteful. I personally don't like any yeah. extreme look. But it's just like, you know, it's the way maybe like the way you look more beautiful in like, you know, in some the pad of like commercial thing, the way you get more money. So it's just like, it's okay. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Now we get down to the very juicy section. Juicy? These are all dating. How juicy? These are all dating questions. Okay. I'm um, not an expert well, though. Well, actually, let's start with this. All right. Cedric says, the female presenter is beautiful. Is she single? And then Derek says, is she single? And then Joshua says, "Most, what is the most money a guy has offered her, meaning oh. you earn, for your company? So mm -hmm. you can answer that however you want. I don't know what you're going to say. For, uh, the, but the last question is what um, offer? Are you single? And what is the most money someone has offered you for something? Oh, all right. So right now, I'm kind of focused more on work, but I'm open. Like I'm kind of, okay, seeing someone, but I'm like really need to be sure that that guy is the right one and then yeah no more single but for now chill and how much money um i don't i don't have like any guy offer like how much money like specific how much but they just like i have like two properties in us i have um lots of money you know like or some guys like I'm retired. I can give you salary, some stuff like that. I can marry you right now. Do you have any friends or do you know anybody? Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. Had someone say yes. I want to give you a have. lot of money. Yes, have it's like kind of call sponsor, like that guy have many girls. Can, can you explain what a sponsor is? Sponsor is just like to take care of you, everything like girlfriend, like. Uh, but mainly more about like send you money every month, like as a salary, pay for your condo and all the stuff that you would like to get. Uh -huh. But the conditions, it could be for some person, they can have a many girlfriends, but I really gonna treat you really well. So that's, that's how the sponsor is called. And yes, yeah, I want my friend have something like that. And, you know, could be a hundred or two hundred k per month. Yes, one hundred to two hundred k per yeah, month. Yeah, or sometimes they just like, oh, okay, you so beautiful today. You being a good girl, I give you forty k, seventy k, stuff like that. But yeah. it's just condition. You need to accept that. I also have many girls. Mm. So yeah. This person says, I heard ladies from the countryside are easier to date. Is that true or no? Easier to date in what way? But for, I mean, I think it's harder because like in countryside, like you're the language barrier. I think it's hard, but maybe they might think because um, they can offer some money for the girls in the countryside or what, and then you can date with them easier. I think it's also could be, but not really. I think it's can be easier in some ways and harder in other ways. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's definitely harder as far as like culture and language. Yeah. But if you did find someone mm -hmm. that you connect well with, then I think there's a higher chance that the relationship could work out mm -hmm. because when you date people that are in the, especially a city like this, so many people all the time, meeting different people all the time. I think it can be hard to maintain ah, a relationship. Yeah, got it. So yeah, I would say if it's something like that, this situation that you uh, say, I think it's easier because um, if in like Bangkok, you have so many options, but at there, you may be like slow down with a relationship. Okay, just chill with that. And you may become like very, very strong relationship for like the girls from the countryside but it depends like not everybody like which girl that you meet after a while crocodile says are the ladies as pretty in person as i see online oh <laughs> yes yes they oh, are oh 
um i'm not sure but for me everybody want to look good on social media so yeah no i mean for real though the amount of uh yes there are some incredibly beautiful thai girls yeah. just naturally um but also the amount of like filters that people are using on instagram yeah. is out of control oh yeah yeah we, we also have like uh the app is called face app that you guys maybe really need to note it because this app just really helps us for looking very good and it doesn't look bad like fake it looks like natural even some of my friends said like guys don't even know they're just like oh beautiful and that's it so maybe you need to have a look a lot because yeah. even But me there's no face app here so <laughs> what you're seeing is the real thing it's real <laughs> or if i remove my makeup okay it's even more real but i don't care it's fine <laughs> this person says what do thai girls think about indian men mm. what do they prefer love or money so i don't know if those two questions are related but mm -hmm. let's talk about indian guys first mm -hmm. i think for thai people I think they think about India like uh, the way they approach is not okay for for Thai girls. Like you approach and you have a very extremely like words that like is like not real. Like oh, like at first at the beginning you just say you want to marry. It. So maybe Thai people kind of feel uncomfortable the way that you approach us. But if you more like about talking friendly just chill slow down a little maybe thai people might change their mind but most of thai girls or even my friends they, they thought like this like oh they too much you know slow down yeah unfortunately i think a lot of thai women have had some negative experiences mm -hmm. with indian guys and yeah. i think it's a cultural yeah. difference and it's not to say that no thai women date indian guys because i i've known people girls that have dated indian yeah, guys yeah, yeah. but um i think especially if you're indian you should be much more gentle and polite and not yeah. so forward because i mean you you worked around soy 11 yeah where L there's a lot of indian, indian people, people and they say some crazy yeah. things to you right yes but also i also have some indian friends which is which they are so nice it just yeah be respectful more polite yeah and please please don't like try to compare like okay but if it's come to white guys or furang and then i'm gonna be okay like whatever you indian or furang please be respectful and polite he also asked do thai women prefer love or money Loves or money, it goes together. <laughs> Do you think money is not important? I think Thai people prefer love, and then uh, when it's come to love, when you love someone, you really want to make them feel like self. When you stay together for a living, so you're gonna provide for girl, and then later money. Yes, but both. Uh, Simon says, I get attention in the West, but when I l live in Bangkok, I'm not sure if I got attention just because I'm a Farang. So I think what he's saying is just being a Westerner, mm -hmm. do some Thai girls just like that? No, I think most of foreigner like think like, oh, when you're, I'm Farang and then when I come here, I'm gonna be so popular, every girl want me. No, the way you think is like, because actually not every Thai girl is like Farang. Some still like Asian. So please don't think like that. I think the way that you're gonna attract or Thai girls gonna like you is the way you behave, your personality. Okay. Garrett says, what's the most important part of, of a relationship for you and why? The most important part of the relationship? Mm, I think it's about to build a trust together. I think the most important or the way you can make them feel like safe whenever you go. Just like being more mature, being more like an adult, real adult. Riley asked, what do Thai women expect from Western men? 
Mm. Like, is there something different that Thai women want from Western guys? I think personally, I think it's about to make us or take us to see new things or new experiences. I think that's what I expect because I think the girl that didn't like Thai or Asian and they like Western, maybe they want to see something new. So maybe they want to expect from that. Maybe the culture, the food, the people, or to let uh, them see new kind of thing. Cedric asked, how do you meet nice Thai girls in Bangkok if you don't want to go to a bar or a, a nightclub? A bar or a club. Mm, it depends how long you stay. Like, I mean, for some foreigner, if you stay very short time, and like you always go to like some tourist spot and you always gonna see people from bar or get to know people from club, right? But if you stay in the long term, it's also about if you work here, then maybe it's easier to see like normal girl. Yeah, I mean, I I think I need to ask you this question because I have no tough. idea. I mean, it's hard yeah. to answer if I if I don't know uh, how long you're staying here. Yeah, because if you're just visiting here, it's gonna be harder. If you live here, then there's many situations in your daily life yeah. that you come across people. Yeah. And but I think in general, if you're going to meet someone during the day or outside of uh, like mm -hmm. a bar or a nightclub mm -hmm. environment, you might need to work here. Well, I think a lot of guys are come here and they're very direct. Like you told mm -hmm. me about the guys that come tap you at the mall or something. Oh uh, like, yes. Yeah, you don't like that. But if you're just friendly with somebody, even if you see them at mm. a cafe or if you're I don't know at the BTS station, mm -hmm. and I, if you're just friendly and like you're making friends and you're not trying to yeah. take someone on a date, I think that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I well, mean, even you get to know people from the bar or club, it doesn't mean that that girl is like. Yeah, but I think yeah. sometimes people are just not comfortable to and, go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. C can be anywhere else, but just. As as we told or mentioned many times, it's just the way you approach. Yes. DC asked, uh, he wants to know about cheating, but from the other perspective, do Thai women cheat often the same as Thai guys? Mm, I think, mm, I think Thai women, for me, from my experience and like from my friends, they're not they mostly don't cheat when they're in a relationship with someone that they like being serious with, but they like to lie when they're single. You know what I mean? No, explain. Like, I mean, okay, when for girls, when we were single, we like to lie, like telling lies, like liar, <laughs> to be like, oh, I did with, no, I don't did with this guy, you know, just because we want to, we don't want to stuck or stick with anybody. But when it's come for girl, when it comes to someone that, okay, I'm going to commit with this guy. So we barely don't, we barely like cheat. We don't cheat that you much. You barely cheat? How, <laughs> like, how much cheating I, do you do? <laughs> no, I mean for like some of my friend experiences when they're like, oh, I really like this guy. I love someone. I have my friend who like did many one night stand, friend with benefits like that. But once she found the one that she really like it or even has a long distance relationship, she's still like, okay. I'm gonna be with this guy. I don't. I don't want to do any bad thing. But I don't know if you're making uh, <laughs> DC here feel better or worse. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just yeah. I, it I, okay, have some cheating from a foreigner but... perspective. I would say that I think cheating here, both men and women, is more normalized than in many mm, places. But I like, don't want to normalize. I think it. it's it's more common, mm -hmm. and it can be. Yeah. Oh, just a thing. Yeah, but still have some that don't cheat. Nah, so not everyone. Okay, when you find one, you can let me know. Yeah. Okay. Me. This person said, what is the best and worst pickup line you've ever heard? Um, <laughs> I don't remember. All right, well, let me walk you through this one. So I can, <laughs> I can probably guess uh. the worst one is probably when someone asks you something about money or... They say, what did you say in that last video we did? You were working at the restaurant and they come up and they, they ask, they went like this. They, they go, 
or you did this like uh, do you, yeah do you or do they extra? just like oh you do some extra or just like like this next to me this next to me yeah, yeah. or if like if i if i uh, buy the drinks here you want to drink with me right here like that but not like pick up lines they've for me they're more like straightforward to what they really want Mm, you want to come over? You want to go with me? What is the best thing someone has come up to you and they said, and maybe you you like? It's not them. pick up line, but it's about their make. Well, a you don't think it's a pick up line? Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. It's like make a conversation. Mm, like what? Um, act about my my interests, about like what I do for a living. Okay, so if you're at the mall, yeah. Let's say you're at Terminal Twenty One, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. and you're shopping at the store. Oh yes. And someone comes up to you. And what's something good that they could say? Um, they can say something like, "Oh, you also like this one? Oh, yeah, I like this one too." Blah blah blah. But don't need to make a very very um, long conversation because I can see that most of people when we go to the mall, we just want to have a personal time. So maybe you can ask for contact. Like, okay, why not? If you act more in the way of friendly, but if you act into the way that very flirting i might not give so be more friendly first and then let's see what's going to happen after that i don't want to say that i'm very good at this okay but <laughs> can you can you tell me I, what is the I bad thing to do i have had some good experiences all right okay how um but basically what it comes down to especially with the thai or the asian women is you cannot be so direct you have to be more friendly mm. maybe a little bit more funny i also think it matters where you're meeting them are you much older? Are they much younger? What What is the situation? So, um, but I think in general though, if you can just talk about something like, uh, oh, like when Hollywood Dan was here, he was saying how he went up to the girl at the mall and said like, oh, I'm new here. Um, I was just wondering if you knew of a good, what the best temple is to oh, visit yeah. or just oh, anything to start. That's good. That's yeah, good. I know. Well, that, that one's dance. I have a better one. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, you know, my friend, actually bad guy, Mark said, uh-huh. cause you know, I work at Starbucks a lot. Right. And I, a lot of pretty girls at Starbucks during the day, a lot. And mm-hmm. it's not the same girls that you would see at the club at two in oh. the morning. But my friend says, Oh, what's the point? Like you can't meet anybody at Starbucks. And I'm like, yes, you definitely can. So I get off the phone with him and there's a girl sitting on the bench and I go up and I just sit next to her and I'm just like, hey, can I ask you something? Like my friend said, it's not possible to meet a good girl at Starbucks. What do you think about that? <laughs> and she liked it. Oh. <laughs> that was the start of a good conversation. But for me, I can know even daily. Oh, you're gonna, okay. Yeah, no, so she had a good reaction. I was and like... I, won't, I, won't, I won't say uh, who, but there's another person that I recently met at Starbucks Oh yeah. That you know, it went quite well. <laughs> so uh but you guys can find that about that later. Later, later um, soon. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, just be friendly, don't be so direct mm. and don't stay too long if you meet someone yeah. in public, especially during the day. Mm. Just but get if, the contact if you really want to keep going, like, you know, to talk to her, just try to get the contact, but in a good way, like, oh, can I be friends? Don't be like to get to know to you more like don't be too too much yeah, yeah. all right Ern. Yes. that was a lot of questions i like this this is really cool format if you guys like this format where we just kind of go through the questions let us know because we're just trying this out and so many people message or they leave comments mm-hmm. or they post in the facebook group that uh i don't know we want to we want to answer some of your questions yes they want to answer more if you are moving here or you're traveling here you're planning a trip in the next few months and you have like more detailed questions or if you want to talk to one of us directly, mm-hmm. we have a private Facebook group down below. You can join that and ask whatever you want in there. A lot of other people can also help. You're not in the group right now, yes. but you told me today you want me to add you to yeah, the group. Yeah, let me join. So we'll put you in there. Tonight we are going to go to, where are we going to go? Tichuca Rooftop. Right. We're going to try to film a video there. So Tuchuka is a really popular rooftop yes. in Looks so nice. And it's known because it has the uh, it has like a big light up tree, it's, I guess it is. Uh, I think it's at T1 building, Tonglaw. T1 building, Tonglaw, yeah. yeah. 
but it has a, I think it's supposed to be a tree. I've never been there. It's like a Latin inspired bar. I'm not sure. I did like a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, but you see it in a lot of Instagram photos. So now that it's kind of low season, maybe it won't be as crowded. So we're going to go check it out. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any other questions, drop them down below. Subscribe to the Clips channel. Join the Facebook group. Buy us a drink. We'd really appreciate it. <laughs> And we will see you in the next video. Next video. Thank you.